Hey guys, how you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the video. So let's do a little trade review for today. So I traded the NASDAQ on the, so I traded the Qs in the morning today and I had a couple different trades. Some are winners, a couple losers, and I'll just go over that real quick with you. I'm not going to go super in depth about my entries, why I entered and all that stuff, because I feel like I give too much away in these videos anyways. So basically I'm just going to tell you where I entered and a brief sort of trade review and that's going to be it so you can see i placed arrows where i entered and that's pretty much it so i'll use the replay function real quick just to show you so the nasdaq was moving higher this morning definitely stronger than the rest of the sectors <clears throat> we were moving up originally to test the highs of yesterday so 241.68 was in fact the highs of yesterday all-time high and you can see how we move up higher and i initiated a short position here starting at 946 i got along some of these puts on the queues uh, the friday expiries and basically signals that i was watching was the type of thing where we're getting higher high breakouts but with not a lot of follow through so i got short there and then i managed to take some profits as we pulled back i got out of this trade at 10 o'clock here my profit target was going to be in the low 241s and you can see that we eventually got that and i would have got out on this pop right here so what kept me confident is that basically we broke higher and we're not seeing a lot of follow through. Now, when I entered this trade, my stop was going to be above 242. So I didn't get stopped out on that trade. I managed to take a profit and get out. Next trade was a little bit later. It was at 1038. So you can see how the NASDAQ moved lower, broke to a lower low with no follow through. This right here was a nice long setup. I was actually watching it on the four minute time frame right here where we came up to meet with the 26 period exponential. I was trying to get the fill, but I didn't get it. And it was a type of thing where you had to have the order set and ready. And then you can't really be too picky about, you know, waiting for a double failure or something and then get long on that thing. Really, it was like it broke. It, it didn't see any sellers down there. And then it started to move higher. And then it was like you had to chase it or you wouldn't take the trade. So that was that trade. I missed it. Again, I was watching it on the four minute chart right there. 26 period exponential. Probably keep a stop below these lows. <clears throat> so as we continued here the nasdaq continues in the uptrend bounced off the 12 exponential i took another short here at 1038 so i would have got stopped out of this trade four minutes after i got into it and i'll just show you real quick so i got in here at 1038 you can see we broke to a higher high with no follow-through and then we came lower here met up with the moving average couldn't trade lower because the tech sector was very strong today and then i found myself on the wrong side of that trade stopped out for a small loss roughly four dollars on that contract i had to stop at 242.26 and that stopped me out with my conditional order let's keep going so you can see how the market's moving higher bouncing off the 12 exponential moving average this would have been a nice one right here i didn't grab it though I wasn't confident enough again i'm looking to trade more failures than bounces off of moving averages that's just what i'm up to so you can see here at this point i entered a short position again and I would have been having a stop above 243.31, I think was my stop on that trade. And I managed to get stopped out. So the NASDAQ was in squeeze mode at this point. And seeing volume up here, totally squeezing, shorts under pressure. And I guess I didn't realize that. Maybe I jumped the gun a little bit on that one. So what happened was I exited the trade there for a tiny loss. That one was actually even a smaller loss. And then I re-entered this trade on this bear break right here because we had a breakout so you can see here just look at the highs of these candles you can see the high was 16 23 31 33 and then we're trading back in the 20s real quick so for me that's good enough for a failed breakout and i fade against that and we moved lower and then broke the highs again and look at what happened after we got no follow through on that one so you had one opportunity another opportunity to fade it and my stop was going to be above 243.50 at that point and you can see how we faded lower now the problem with this trade was that i'm long and out of the money option and the market is trading sideways so there's premium decay there and there's volatility decay also because the option has about th four days to expiry at this point so the vague on that contract i'm not sure what exactly it is but it's probably around six or so Per contract and basically I got hit with a bit of decay on this one so I was having trouble taking profit now when I entered this trade right here so I'm long this put option uh, on that failed breakout my profit target was going to be relatively around the low 242s right around here this is what I was aiming for now let's see if we got that five minute chart you can see we attempted to break lower under 242.66 we broke it by a few pennies no follow-through resulted in another leg down to 
240-260s that were meeting up with the 26 period on the five minute chart. And I guess that right there would have been the signal to get out of the trade. So I think that my profit target on this trade was exact was not exactly all there with what it should have been. Um, so I was aiming for low 242s, but I didn't realize that when we got up to here, the five minute exponential was going to be right here. And that's exactly where we bounced off of. And then I managed to get stopped out as we broke the high of the day. So for this last short right here, definitely my profit target was a little far away and I was looking for a bit of an extra move here. And it was the same sort of setup as earlier in the day where we're moving lower and the sellers are kind of in control and we're seeing held offers around the board. Like I remember watching it here. This was when I was watching it. So you can see how we bounced initially off 242.66 and then we're seeing this lower high pattern breaking to lower lows. And I remember seeing a whole bunch of green prints come through on the offers here at 242.90, and they were holding those offers. And as you can see, we did trade lower after they held those offers. But then once we traded lower down to 55, no sellers were able to come and push it lower. And then we just continued higher from there. So that kind of got me out of the trade. And I basically, I wasn't sitting here watching it the whole time. I had my orders to take profit and my orders to stop out. And I was just like in the other room doing something. And then I eventually got stopped out and that was it. So I think for this trade, definitely I think my profit target was a little bit too far away. So I had to be taking profit around this five minute exponential. And it's a little bit tricky sometimes to measure profit targets. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this trade review today. So generally, I'm using this to measure my risk in my contracts as I trade them. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken an Excel document and I have the math formula here, directional risk per contract equals, and it will calculate the math formula based on the three inputs I need. One of them is the delta, the amount of ticks I'm risking and the gamma of the contract. So I input all these three and it will automatically calculate the formula. So you can see here I've created the formula right there. And the formula is as follows, and I, share, I shared it in my video yesterday. So it's the original delta plus the new delta of where the delta is going to be where your stop loss point is. And then you divide the two deltas to get an average delta. And now that you have your average delta for the price range, you multiply that by the amount of ticks you're risking in the stock. And that will give you your average dollar move in the contract based on the average delta. All right, you got it. And I'll show you right here. It's pretty cool. So let's say the delta is 50. You're risking 75 ticks and the gamma is point, I don't know, point zero six. It will tell me that I'll be risking $39 a contract for this trade. Cool. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for today. I wish you all the best. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.